Welcome to Career Journeys, a series of videos by the Consortium for Public Education. Here we explore the career experiences and pathways of professionals from a wide variety of careers to help you think about the skills you'll need and the paths you might take after high school. Hi, I'm Gina Barrett, a Program Director at the Consortium for Public Education. Today I'm here with Julie Travellini, an Education Program Director at Allegheny Land Trust. Thank you for being here, Julie. Hey, no problem. Thanks for inviting me, Gina. Oh, sure. I, I wanted to start off today with asking you, what does an education program director do? So as an education program director, I kind of wear many hats, usually all at once. I have a teaching degree, so my main focus is writing the lesson plans or the overall curriculum for the land trust. So I am a teacher and that's my main focus is teaching people about nature and about the earth. I just do it in a little bit different way. I don't do it in a classroom. I do it right outside in nature, um, taking folks outside to get them experiencing what's around them. Uh, so I write lesson plans anywhere from ages two years old all the way through our community programs that takes um, our community members out to learn a little about the properties all around them and what they can find there. I also manage all of our supplies and write the programming for our summer camps, and I write grants sometimes too. So really, it's a, a really wide range of things that I do as a program director. What, what's a normal day like for you? Is there a normal day? Some days there's a normal day, and some days there's not a normal day. <laughs> Anytime that I'm interacting with the public or out in a classroom or out on a property with a group of kids, it's never a normal day. Um, the day can get derailed really quickly if we see something really cool. I remember one time we were supposed to be talking about plants, but a really huge eyed click beetle, it was like this big, flew down right into the middle of our group and started clicking and bouncing. So the day was lost for that. Um, so there's really never a typical day when I'm outside with people. When I'm inside, it can be slightly more slightly more normal. Um, normal is relative these days, but on a normal day, I'm usually writing some piece of curriculum. I'm working with partners to do partnership projects like the Nature Backpack program we did with the Allegheny County Libraries, or I might be working with other environmental educators in the state with the Pennsylvania Association of Environmental Educators. So really, not too normal of a day typically i kind of change what i'm doing probably like 10 or so times in a day just because there's always so many projects and partnerships happening all at once it sounds to me like you're never bored no <laughs> never <laughs> what what are some of the traits that make you good at what you do so for me i just love learning if i don't learn something new every day i kind of feel like that's when i get bored is when i'm not constantly learning something and that's what's so great about working outside is that I've been doing this for 13 years now, but every time I take a walk in the woods, I can find something new. So for me, that's really a perfect fit because I love to learn and there's always something more to learn. I'll never be able to learn all of the bugs in the world. That's just not going to happen. So always something new to learn. And I'm always just really curious about what things are. So I love to see, um, I love to see do things and exciting things and I love to learn the name of things so if I see something new I love learning its name uh, so I really like the curiosity part of it and the always learning part I've also always been not really creative but slightly creative so being able to write lesson plans for outdoor use really helps you kind of tune into your creative side and you can show that by different activities you do different ways to use materials so maybe you use something in a totally different way outside than you would inside. So it's really great in that way too that I can kind of be a little bit creative as well. What, uh, what did you do before? What brought you to this? What was your career path like? Yeah, so I think I kind of always wanted to do this, but I, I didn't know this job existed. So like back in high school and even earlier than that, probably like most of my life, I wanted to work with animals, but not having you know the career exploration that I did until high school, I thought that meant working in a zoo. Um, I never really realized that there was like a naturalist component that I could work with animals that aren't tigers and lions that are animals that I'm going to see every day in my own backyard. So I always kind of wanted to be outside and work with animals. I just didn't realize that I could do this job per se. 
Um, so I started college actually as a biology major, uh, conservation biology actually, and then I switched to just general biology and I took an environmental studies route and then I started, I didn't realize this was a career option until I took an internship in college um, doing environmental education. So that's really where it all started for me was that kind of aha moment and in an internship where I could like take my love of being outside and combine it with my love of learning and my love of creatures and kind of combine it all into one career. Well, it sounds like the internship was, was pivotal and was very yeah, important. definitely. <laughs> So that, that's some great advice to make sure you look at those types yeah. of opportunities. What um, I think you already mentioned about what your post-secondary uh, degree was. Mm -hmm. are, are there any other options um, that sh for, for uh, experiences like this? Yeah, for sure. So I actually started out my college career at Muskingum University, and I started as conservation biology. Uh, but what I didn't realize when studying that was that there was a whole lot of economics and politics involved with conservation as well. Uh, and that didn't appeal to me as much. I really just wanted the, the nature and the biological component. So I switched to biology. Um, I finished at Muskingum with a bachelor's degree in biology and environmental studies. And then I went back to Muskingum for a master's in teaching a few years later. So I kind of went, kind of went about it backwards. I got my biology degree first and realized that I wanted to be a biology teacher, but not in a classroom out in nature. So I went back and got my master's. We've had a lot of great staff come through uh, the land trust who do not have teaching backgrounds and some did not even have biology degrees. It was just a passion and an interest of them, of theirs. And they had degrees in art, creative writing. They had degrees in political science, some had conservation degrees, but some of the best educators we've ever had had that really creative component. We're the creative writing majors and the art majors who saw things a little differently and were really able to convey really well to kids. We've had staff come through that had um, horticultural certificates from like a Bidwell training center. So they didn't have a two or four year degree, but had that really specific intense training and they were fantastic too. So there's a lot of different ways you can go about it if you don't want to do a four-year degree or a, a master's degree as well. Uh, those certificate trainings are really helpful too. There's a lot of great two-year options as well. Great. Is there any um, advice that you have or anything that you think students should know right now while they're in school if they want to prepare for something like you do? Yeah, so it's really important. It's just as important to know what you don't want to do as it is to know what you do want to do. So my advice, if you think you're interested in something, is to volunteer somewhere or to apply for an internship, whatever you can do to kind of get your feet in there. I know my very first experience working at a zoo before I interned at one, I volunteered. I just called and said, hey, can I volunteer? And they said, sure, we could always use free help. So always kind of take that opportunity to volunteer and maybe you'll find out that you don't love it and that's okay. Um, that's just as important. But get out there and really get your feet wet. Ask people, folks that do this kind of job are always looking for help and there can never be too many people doing environmental education. So we welcome that. So always reach out and see if that is something you can help with and we'd be more than willing to, to let you try it out and help and see what our days are like. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, Julie. We really appreciated everything. Oh, you're welcome. For more information or to learn about other careers in the Career Journey series, visit our website and check back soon for our next installment. Thanks.